The Tale of Des Peru is a 2008 computer animated adventure fantasy comedy drama family film directed by Sam Fell and Robert Stephen Hagen and produced by Gary Ross and Alison Thomas, loosely based on the 2003 fantasy book of the same name by Kate DiCamillo. The movie is narrated by Sigourney Weaver and stars Matthew Broderick. Robbie Coltrane, Dustin Hoffman, Richard Jenkins, Kevin Klein, Frank Langella, William H. Macy, Emma Watson and Tracy Ullman. It was released on December 19, 2008 by Universal Pictures. The movie is the second theatrically released computer-animated film distributed by Universal Studios. It was also produced by Universal Animation Studios, Frame Store Feature Animation and Relativity Media. The film received mixed reviews from critics and it earned $86,947,965 on a $60 million budget. The film was released on DVD and Blu-ray on April 7, 2009. Plot Sailor Pietro and his rat companion Roscuro dock in the Kingdom of Dor, famous around the world for its delicious soups. During the Royal Soup Day, the chief cook, Andre, makes good soup due to Baldo, a magical genie that emerges from his pot and is made entirely out of food. Enchanted by the smell of the delicious soup, Roscuro slips away and ends up in the royal banquet hall. On a chandelier above the royal family's table, he slips and falls into the queen's soup, giving her such a fright that she has a heart attack and dies. The entire hall goes into a panic, as the guards pursue Roscuro. He attempts to flee the castle, but sees Pietro's ship has already sailed away, and narrowly escapes capture by falling down a sewer drain. It leads to the castle dungeons, where he's found and taken in by Botticelli, the leader of the dungeon's large rat population. Distraught over his wife's death, the king forbids any and all things soup-related and makes rats illegal. Without its soup, Dor becomes impoverished and dreary. Andre is banned from making any more soup and Baldo stops appearing. The king's daughter, Princess P, despairs over the sad state of the kingdom and how her father has shut the entire world out, even her, in his grief. In a mouse village in the castle's abandoned kitchen storage room, a baby is born to the Tilling family. They name him Desperu. As he grows up, it becomes obvious Desperu's not like other mice. He isn't meek and timid, but brave and curious, unnerving his family, friends, and school teachers. In an effort to teach him to behave like a proper mouse, his brother takes him to the castle library to show him how to chew books. But Desperu is more interested in reading than eating them. He becomes fascinated by fairy tale books about daring knights and trapped princesses. One day while reading, he comes across Princess P and the two speak. She makes him promise to finish reading the story about the princess so he may tell her how it ends. Upon discovering Desperu has violated mouse law by talking to a human, his parents turn him into the mouse council. The council banishes Desperu to the dungeons. There he is captured by the rats and thrown into their arena with a cat. As he's about to be eaten, Roscuro saves his life by requesting Botticelli give Desperu to him to eat. Having been unable to adjust to being a sewer rat, Roscuro is desperate to hear about the outside world. The two become friends, as every day Desperu tells him the stories and of the princess and her sadness. Hoping to make amends for all the trouble he's caused, Roscuro sneaks up to Princess P's room and tries to apologize, but she's frightened by him and lashes out. Hurt by this, Roscuro decides he wants P to hurt just as much as he does. He enlists the help of Migriso, Princess P's slightly deaf young maid who longs to be a princess herself and despises P for what she perceives to be ingratitude of her position. By convincing her she can take P's place if she kidnaps her. After Mig drags P down to the dungeons, Roscuro double-crosses her and locks her in a cell. Meanwhile, Desperu realizes that the princess is in danger. 
Back in the rat colony, Roscuro sees the apologetic sincerity in P's eyes and regrets his actions, but is unable to stop the rats, to whom he has given her, from clambering over her. Roscuro tries to tell the rats that P is not bad, but Botticelli does not let him because he wants P dead even going as far as allowing the rats to eat or trample over P. Roscara figures out that Botticelli is a double-crossing traitor and that P is doomed. However, Desperu lets loose a cat, and the rats run away before the cat goes back into its cage. Roscaro then forces Botticelli into the cage where he is eaten by the cat. Mig is later reunited with her father, who recognizes the birthmark on her neck. It finally rains and the sun shines after soup is made for the first time in years. The mice all then try to be braver like Desperu. The king is able to overcome his grief and soup and rats are allowed back in the kingdom. Roscuro returns to a life at sea, where there was always light and a gentle breeze. And Desperu himself takes off on a journey to see the world as the film ends. Cast, Matthew Broderick as Desperu Teeing, a brave but non-conforming mouse who does not run from danger as a mouse should. His big ears are in great use for flying and listening to things other mice cannot. Emma Watson as Princess P, a human princess who befriends Desperu. Robbie Coltrane as Gregory, the jailer and Miggery, Mig, Sow's father. Francis Conroy as Antoinette, Desperu's mother. Patricia Cullen as Queen, a queen who is scared of rats and who loves soup. Sam Fell as Ned, Smudge. Tony Hale as Furlow, Desperu's older brother. Kieran Hines as Botticelli, the leader of the rat world. Dustin Hoffman as Roscuro, a rat who once lived at sea, and is currently working for Botticelli. Richard Jenkins as Principal. Kevin Klein as Andre, the cook. Frank Langella as Mayor, Christopher Lloyd as Hovis, William H. Macy as Lester, Desperu's father, Bronson Pinchot as Town Crier, Charles Shaughnessy as Pietro, Stanley Tucci as Baldo, the Soup Genie, Tracy Ullman as Miggery, Mig, so, Princess P's servant girl, Sigourney Weaver as the narrator, Production. The film's production was marred by disagreements and malpractice, or accusations thereof, between the French, British and North American staff involved. Sylvain Comet was employed by Gary Ross and Alison Thomas as director early on, before the film was approved for funding by Universal Pictures, with pre-production taking place at his studio Django Films in Edinburgh. Comet came up against creative and ethical differences with the producers and was eventually fired from the project and thrown out of the studio. Space allocated to Desperu. Mike Johnson was also hired as director before the role eventually went to Sam Fell and Robert Stephen Hagen, who, reportedly, had not read the original novel and directed the film, made at Framestore in London, via speakerphone and email. Music the score to The Tale of Des Peru was composed by William Ross, who recorded his score with the Hollywood Studio Symphony at the Sony Scoring Stage. Release Theatrical release The Tale of Des Peru was theatrically released on December 19, 2008 by Universal Pictures. Home video release The film was released on DVD and Blu-ray on April 7, 2009. The Blu-ray release also includes a standard definition DVD of the film in addition to the Blu-ray disc. The film brought in a revenue of $25,531,805 in the U.S. DVD sales market. Reception Critical response The film received mixed reviews from critics. Rotten Tomatoes reported that 56% of critics gave positive reviews based on 107 reviews. The website's consensus reads, Despite its striking visuals, the tale of Desperu as a story feels familiar and unimaginative. Another review aggregator, Metacritic, gave the film a 53 one-hundredths approval rating based on 25 reviews. Many critics praised the film for its excellent animation and the charming title character, but complained that it had an unoriginal and scrambled story. 
Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times awarded three stars and wrote in his review that, The Tale of Desk Peru is one of the most beautifully drawn animated films I've seen. But he also wrote, I am not quite so thrilled by the story. Christy Lemire of the Associated Press was more critical, writing that the film feels obvious. Preachy and heavy-handed, box office the film opened at the third position behind Seven Pounds and Yes Man with $10,507,000 in 3,104 theaters with, and $3,385 average, on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, the film was in second. The film closed in March 2009 after grossing $50 million domestically, which was lower than its $60 million budget. The film grossed an additional $37 million overseas for a total of $87 million, making it a modest success.